guys, Julia here from JM Squared Vintage. Welcome back to the channel. I'm here today with the ship with me. These are all orders that came through over the weekend. To be totally honest, last weekend was pretty slow, like unusually slow, especially for this time of year. Like August was great. Beginning of the week last week was great, but the weekend itself was quite slow. Still some really cool things that came in, some cool vintage pieces. One of like my favorite things that I've ever found in my life sold. I was super excited that somebody picked this up, but let me know, are you having the same experience? I'm assuming this has a little bit to do with the fact that like there were Labor Day sales that probably wrapped up around Friday or Saturday. A lot of the country went back to school last week. There was just a lot going on in the country. But let me know, are you having the same experience? Did you have a great weekend? Did you have a slow weekend? Let me know down below. But guys, I'm just gonna apologize in advance. It is hot here. I don't know if anybody is aware, but in Los Angeles, we are in the middle of maybe one of the worst heat waves that we've seen in, it's gotta be 20, 30 years. The last I checked on the temperature, it was 101 degrees here. Yesterday it got up to 108. So if anybody here is in the Los Angeles area, I hope you are staying cool. I hope your air conditioning is uh, tip top. I cannot run the air conditioning while I'm filming because the return is literally right behind me and it is quite loud. So uh, if I am sweating, glistening, anything, I apologize in advance. It is excessively hot right now. But without further ado guys, it is kind of late in the afternoon. Uh, Kel surprise, I am running late. So we need to get these things packed up and off to the post office before they close. So why don't you go grab yourself a snack, grab yourself a drink, sit back, relax, and let's get into the shipment. So the first thing we've got here is this cute little piece from Torrid. Now this is a jumpsuit. It's kind of acid washed, it's sleeveless, it's hooded, it's brand new with tags. Now, Torrid is one of those brands that I've really slowed up on picking up and I, I, I can't figure it out, right? So Torrid pieces are either feast or famine, as in they will either sell in a day or two or sit for a year. Like there is very little in between with me and any Torrid pieces that I found. So I don't really know, let me know, do you have the same experience with Torrid? Have you slowed up picking it up? Is it giving you the same kind of experience? And the thing is like, there's no rhyme or reason to it, right? So like, it's not like it's only new with tags things that are selling really quickly. It's just random things. In general, in general, the only kind of through thread that I've figured out is that most of the stuff that sells pretty quickly from there is black, at least for me. So let me know, like, Look back at your Torrid sales, the things you picked up on, see if you can see any kind of trends that you're experiencing and put it down below. Let's see if we can like pull our experiences together to figure out some kind of rhyme or reason. Because Torrid's great. I love picking up Torrid. They have like fashion forward pieces for plus size, which is like just, there's not a lot of it out there. And I want to make sure that I'm not leaving behind something that somebody would want to find but I really have slowed up. And as I'm filming right now, my policy is generally, I'm only gonna pick up new with tag stuff. But if there is some kind of trend that we can figure out between my sales and yours, uh, let's see if we can figure out. Maybe it's black items. Maybe it's things that lean a little bit goth. Maybe it's more like sportswear items. This is definitely like a, a loungewear, leisure wear piece, but I don't know, man. I am I am so baffled. <laughs> I'm so baffled by tour these days. So let me know your experience. I will say this is like crazy buttery soft. This is that nice like, tensile mix. So it's super drapey, super soft. So I had this for just four days. I had it listed for $32. My sidekick sent an offer for 27, which was accepted with a $1 cost of the bins. It's brought my profit to $20 and 60 cents. So like, there you go, four days. And it's a jumpsuit, like it's a one piece jumpsuit. And again, I have stuff that's been sitting around for like a year that's similar to this and nothing, so. So let's do a little crowdsourcing and figure out what's going on with Torrid right now. Next up here, now this is one that I've had for a while and I've had a lot of interest in it, but it hasn't moved. This is from Eileen Fisher and man, I wish you could feel this. This is linen, look at the knit on that. This is like a linen blend, open weave sweater. I think what made this take so long to sell is the fact that it is a small petite. Now Eileen Fisher, it's a little bit more of like a mature brand. So you wanna be sourcing larger sizes. Obviously not all of us have a choice to be like, oh, I wanna go out and find a 2XL Eileen Fisher piece. You pick up what you can pick up. And of course I'm sourcing these at the bins, but this is a small petite. This one's a little bit more of an uncommon size. So happy to move this guy along. Again, I've had this for quite a while. 
tons of interest, so many questions. And it always, like, when you find something that is this delicately open woven, it always is a marvel to me that these things, like, last in the bins. Think about what it looks like in the bins as somebody is going through and, like, breaking up the bins to see what's in there, like, t tossing the things, 85 hands in there pulling things apart, and, you know, not counting what happened to it before it even got put out on the floor. Uh, it's always a marvel to me when things like this come out unscathed. And it is beautiful. I love that color. I love the cut of it. It's just really chic. So this one I've had for almost a year. So I was very ready to move this on. I had it listed for $34 and I do believe I had lowered the price on it a couple months ago, just with it being that small petite size. And I got an offer for $25, which I did accept. Again, ready to move her on. And I had it for just like just under one year. And with the $1 cost of the bins, this brought my profit to $19 even. So I hope she loves it. I'm happy that this is going to a new home because it is just too pretty of a sweater to sit up in my closet. Next up, we've got a four piece bundle here. And the first piece here is this cute Daydreamer TLC shirt. Daydreamer is definitely a brand to be on the lookout for. They make like reissue band t-shirts in this vein. But when I say that they retail for about $80, that's not an exaggeration. <laughs> They're very expensive. They're super soft. I love the cut of them, but it's just, it's an expensive brand. So you wanna keep your eye out for that. Next up here is this beautiful cashmere Pontel Dolman sleeve sweater. And if these look familiar to you, it's because they are. This was actually sold, these two pieces were sold as a bundle actually to one of you. And there was just some cross streams of addresses. So they got returned to sender and I just kept them safe for her. And she ended up adding a few more pieces into the bundle so we could avoid having her pay for shipping on this twice. Let's like, that's the first and foremost. So one of the things that she added to bundle, oh my God, I was so excited. This is one of the coolest things I think I have ever found. This is like a, I don't want to call this a cardigan. It's almost like a light jacket, like a topper piece from a brand called Native Village. Now I had never heard of Native Village. It's a very small brand. I couldn't find much info on it other than the fact that it's like out of Japan. But the thing is, this is exactly the kind of piece that I would always advise people to pick up. The materialization on this is so top notch. Like this is unbleached silk. This is a like a loose slub linen blend. This is embellished cotton. It just hits all of those hallmarks of weird and well-made. And it's just like, it's so interesting. <laughs> and it's, it's beautiful. It's in beautiful condition. It's so like perfectly fall. And I knew that this was something, whether or not this had a brand or not, this is something that was going to get picked up on the style alone, because it is just so unusual. I was like so excited when I saw that she picked these up. I'm, I'm just delighted that it's going to one of you. And then finally, this cute little Lululemon shadow stripe t-shirt. It's, it's a little bit of a V back to the neck. So just, it's like a little t-shirt with a little something extra. And Lululemon t-shirts, we, you know, we love. So she picked up the things that she had purchased before and then added a few more things in. So just some really cool pieces here. That velvet sweater, I, I knew when I picked that up because it's cashmere, first of all, it's like feather light Pontel cashmere. I, what a dream. Like talk about, talk about a knit you don't see all that often. You rarely see cashmere in a Pontel knit to start with, let alone that lightweight. And it'll still be quite warm because it's cashmere and it's got that like beautiful peach fuzz nap to it, but it's just so different. And then that native village piece, oh my God. Let me know, has anybody out there ever found another piece from native village? I had never heard of them before I picked it up. I have never seen them since. Again, it was kind of hard to even find information on it, but it is stunning. Prepped a little box for this. So the bundle price on these was $170 and the pieces were kind of all over the place in terms of like how long I had them. Like the, the velvet sweater I think sold within a day. I think she had seen it on one of my videos and wanted it. The native village piece I've had for like three or four months. The Lululemon about two months. And then the Daydreamer, I think I had for about a month before it sold. Anyway, so the the bundle price on this was $170. She offered $122, which I gladly accepted. And with a $4 total cost from the bins, which is ridiculous, uh, that brought my profit to $98. And again, just some great, great pieces. 
I remember when I found Native Village. Now I didn't find that exact jacket. I didn't find anything close to that exact piece, but that probably retailed like five, six hundred dollars. That that's a special piece. Next up, we've got another great piece. Okay, so this is a sweatshirt from I don't know if I'm saying this right. S P R Z. I'm just gonna spell it. S P R Z New York. This is a part of Uniqlo, and if you know anything about Uniqlo, Uniqlo is like widely considered some of the best bang for your buck in terms of quality to price in their pieces. Like they make and finish their pieces so nicely. Like this feels akin quality wise, fabrication wise, finishing wise. This feels really similar to something that could easily sell for like $100, $150. Though this probably sold for about $50 because it is that special line and because it is one of their Jean-Michel Basquiat pieces. This is a famous piece done by Jean-Michel Basquiat. If you have been following me for any amount of time, you know that I absolutely adore his work. And it is a play, believe it or not, on Charlie Parker's uh, tombstone. So two tormented yet extremely talented people together in one piece. I just, uh, you know, the shame of it is so much great art comes from the torment of the artist and uh, these two really have some parallels in terms of their lives. So any way that we can honor their lives is, is a good way. But for you guys, if you are searching if you're looking to buy something new and you need some really high quality basics, check out Uniqlo. Their stuff is really quite nice. I have a lot of their pieces. When I went to Japan, I went a little crazy in their stores and that was pretty much the first time that I ever got to go into a Uniqlo because I used to live in Utah and they didn't have one. I don't, I don't know if they have one yet. If you live in Utah, let me know if you have a Uniqlo there. Here, they're in like every other mall. So it's great. And again, like their prices are on par with like Target. Like you're gonna pay about as much for a shirt at Uniqlo as you would at Target. And like the quality couldn't be more different. Uniqlo is just like head and shoulders above of something that like Target produces. So this one is also going to one of you, which makes me happy. Somebody else who also loves Charlie Parker and Jean-Michel Basquiat. And again, just a really nice sweatshirt. So I think you will love it. So I had this listed for $34. I had it for about three months. I got it in the beginning of summer. And uh, with $1 cost in the bins, oh, so sorry, she sent through an offer for 25 with a $1 cost of the bins has brought my profit to $19 even. I hope you absolutely love it. I love that sweatshirt and you better believe if that was anywhere close to my size, that would not be leaving this closet. Next up, now this is one that I've had for a little while, but I knew it would go eventually. So this is from Ellie Tahari, and we've talked about Ellie Tahari before. Ellie Tahari is the designer. So he, if you've seen Tahari at like Macy's in a department store or at like TJ Maxx or anything like that, that it's the same, it's the same company, but Tahari is the diffusion line from Ellie Tahari. Ellie Tahari is the high end line. This is merino wool and like so beautifully knit. It's this like interesting tight cable knit. It's mixed with like this basket knit and some ribbing. It's a long line cardigan, open front, size small. And I just, I knew when I grabbed it, this was something special. Most of the inside tags had been taken out. I know that this is Merino because I know what Merino feels like, but this is definitely like a forever piece. You know, I, I like to, I like to call some things forever pieces when I just know that this is something that'll be like in somebody's wardrobe forever. Really beautiful, high quality, basic color, high end yarns and beautifully made. This probably retailed for two, three hundred dollars. I think without batting an eye. Ellie Tahari is incredibly expensive. You're looking again, you're looking for an Ellie Tahari piece. You're probably looking at retail prices between three and $800, like when you find a silk dress that probably sold for about $800 at Saks. And it's, you know, most of the stuff that I've found from Ellie Tahari is like so stunning, kind of on that, on the side of like minimalist, really kind of classic styles. He doesn't do anything super avant-garde or anything like that. It's very much like investment pieces. I've had a couple like really, stunning little black dresses that have sold from Ellie Tahari. Just, you know, really great closet staples. So this one I had for about 10 months. Again, it was a little bit higher priced. I'm not super surprised that it took a little bit of time to sell. Anytime you're in that like higher end designer space, you're gonna be dealing with that. So I had this for about 10 months. 
listed at $42. I do believe I have lowered the price on that at some point. Um, but I got an offer for $39.10, which I gladly accepted. With the $1 cost of the bins, this brought my profit to $30.87. And as you know, I'm always happy to be moving on a beautiful, high quality basic. Like this makes my heart so happy. Okay, next up here. So this is an interesting one, and this is something that my mom found. This is a pair of braces, not to be confused with suspenders. I think that for most people, the term is used interchangeably, but braces have little button connectors like this that fasten to buttons that are attached to pants and suspenders have clips. So anyway, these braces are made by a company called Trafalgar and that is a name I want you to remember because now this is a pretty plain Jane pair of braces, but Trafalgar is known for making these, these suspenders and braces with like a novelty weave on them. I'll see if I can put a picture of what I'm talking about up here. It'll be pretty obvious if you do see them. Some of those pieces can go well into the hundreds of dollars on the resale market. And like something like this, a pretty plain pair of navy blue braces, even these sell for about $100. My mom picked them up because she had recently looked for them and figured out how dang expensive they are. She ended up picking up three pair while she was out here, but the Trafalgar brand is a known brand and something that people do search for. Like these didn't sit for that long and I did have a lot of like eyeballs on them. So I think the only thing that they had going against them is that they were like navy blue and white and not black for a basic pair. But absolutely, if you see a pair with a more of a novelty print on it, like pick it up because it could be big dollars in resale. So anyway, I had these listed for just two months. They were listed at $38 and they popped through as a full price sale. So like that's great for something like this. $1 cost of the bins has brought my profit to $29.84. Let me know down below if you have ever found a pair of Trafalgar suspenders or braces in that like novelty weave. I wanna know like what you found, how fast they sold, what you got for them. I'm so interested. I mean, talk about something that I never would have even looked at if my mom hadn't like let me know how expensive they are. And then went down the wormhole on them and like had my eyes pop out of my head when I figured out how expensive some of them can be. So next up here, we've got this little crop sweatshirt from a brand called Starlow. Now this was a brand I did not know, but the fleece felt really nice. It was a nice high quality French terry crop silhouette, like all the, you know, the quality hallmarks were there, fully lined hood, etc. And sure enough, they retail pretty high. I want to say they retail in like over $100, maybe a little bit over $100. But this is also like a little bit of a cautionary tale in the whole, like just because it costs a lot of money retail doesn't necessarily mean it's going to resell for a huge amount of money. Now, if you are sourcing from the bins like I am, that's a you know, you can take that risk because, you know, even if they sell 15 bucks or whatever, there's still meat on the bone for profit. But if you are in a world where you are sourcing a little bit more like $5, $6, you know, you want to do a little bit more of a like an intense job comping. Now, I think this had a little bit going against it because I, it was extra small. It was a crop style, so it wasn't necessarily a universally wearable sweatshirt. It's, it's not a size large or an extra large, which can be worn for somebody who is a size large or extra large, all the way down to somebody who's a size small who likes it oversized. But either way, still really nice quality. Again, I always like to call these kind of things an opportunity because they do retail really high. And if you were in the market for some luxury like sweats, Check out Starlow, S-T-A-R-L-O-W. But again, because I'm sourcing low at the bins, that leaves me a little bit more opportunity to test out brands like this that I had never heard of before. It's one of the things I like about doing these kind of videos because I like to report back. You know, of course I'm gonna find things I'm gonna say, you know, great, this was worth about $100. I think I'll get this on resale, but like this gives me the opportunity to tell you what it actually did sell for. And then that way, when you are outsourcing, if you do run across it, you can run, you know, kind of my sold comp against what you are able to source for. Make the right decision for your business. So anyway, I had this listed at $32. I had dropped the price. I think I had this initially listed for about 38 because that's what I, that's what most of the other Starlow pieces that were out there were listed at. I had it listed for about six months and I dropped it at some point in there to 32, got an offer for 20. I was ready to move it on. It's kind of bulky. 
And with the $1 cost of the bins, this brought my profit to $15 even. So again, plenty of meat on the bone for me at a $1 cost, but if you're in that five, six, seven dollar range, I might pass on stuff like this. Uh, unless of course you're buying it for yourself. So lessons learned are always good. Next up, oh, now this was something I knew would go quickly. This is Y2K or 90s vintage. I'm pretty sure this is 90s, like late 90s from Pure DKNY. This is a silk skirt. It is so luscious. And I feel like I've used this word like three times to describe the silk on the skirt, but it, it, it really is. It's like double layer. And the way that they attach the ruffles, there's like extra gathering here to give it a little bit more body to make it look fuller at the end. It's just, it's so lovely. This is a size small, but this is from the era where we wore things very low slung on our hips. It's in great condition. It's brown, which is having a moment right now. I knew that this would go quickly. I just want to fold this so I don't like absolutely crush it. I know it's going to be creased when it gets there, but gently as possible. These are the kind of things that I'm always on the lookout for. Of course, the late 90s, early 2000s were very much like my wheelhouse. That was like my teenage years, my college years. It's something that like I know the fashion of that era very well because that was my fashion. So I am always on the lookout for stuff like like this from that era. You know, DKNY is not a brand I pick up all that often. I do remember it though, back in the 90s being like a really like she she brand. I remember like getting a DKNY dress, I wanna say at like Marshalls or TJ Maxx, like one of those places, and just thinking that I was like, it, you know, but today it's, you know, it's a department store brand. I don't pick it up. I don't pick up more modern pieces unless it's something like exceptional style wise or fabric wise. This I was getting no matter what. So this I had listed for just 10 days. Again, I knew that this was going to be a pretty quick sell and I had it listed for 34 and I got an offer for $28, which I gladly accepted with a $1 cost of the bins has brought my profit to $21.10. Oh, I hope she loves it. And then finally, this is one that I've had for quite a while. This is a vintage merino wool turtleneck dress from Jeffrey Halper for Neiman Marcus. Now I'm gonna guess that this was probably about late 80s, early 90s. It is a turtleneck dress. So, you know, just kind of always classic. If somebody's trying to do the, you know, the addicted to love video for Halloween, I, you know, I always around this time of year sell a few pieces like this. And I always guess that that is what they're using it for. So the label on here said, you know, Jeffrey Halper for Neiman Marcus. It had two different tags. And then the other name on it was Body Action Design. I could find very little on the actual designer or any more of that line. There were a couple things on the secondhand market that I found, but like really not a ton of information. So I don't know much about this designer. If you know anything about them, let me know. I'm assuming if they did work with Neiman Marcus, they were pretty high end. You can usually safely assume that. I don't think that there's any ever been a time in its history that Neiman Marcus was considered like a mid-market department store. I think it was, it's always been luxury. Interesting. Let me know. Sound off down below. I, I was having this conversation with somebody the other day. If you were to think of Saks Fifth Avenue versus Neiman Marcus, which one of those two would you consider higher end? Would you consider them on even playing field? Let me know. Cause I, I'm not going to say what I think. I think I'll sway you one way or another. So anyway, I had this listed for about a year and I had it listed for $42. I was ready to move it on. Again, it's pretty bulky. So I got an offer for $30, which I did accept. Again, had it for just about a year. I think it was just over a year with a $1 cost of the bins has brought my profit to $23 even. And I'm happy to be moving this great little closet staple on. I always pick up those kind of high-end basics from places like Neiman Marcus, you know, there's just always gonna be a market for them. But that is it guys, that is the shipment for today. Again, a little bit of a slower weekend. Let me know how you guys are doing in your own shops. But again, thank you guys so much for hanging with me while I literally get my work done. Thank you for bearing with me while I literally like drip sweat in front of you. I just looked at my thermostat and it said that it's about 82 degrees in this house. So uh, there's a glisten.
There's a glisten here. If you are in California, I believe by the time I publish this video, the heat wave will be gone. But I hope all of you in the LA area survived. I hope you're doing okay. But if you had fun, please consider leaving a like or a comment on this video. Of course, don't forget to subscribe. I would love to have you along for this journey. But without further ado, guys, I have got to get these things over to the post office. I don't want to leave the house again, but I have to. So guys, without further ado, have the most beautiful weekend. Happy hunting, and I will see you in the next one.